My name is Jessica, and I am 31 years old. I started my own business at the age of 25, and although it is still small, I run an app development company. My previous job was in the IT field. The company was not a big one, but it was a time when companies were being created one after another. I took the plunge and resigned from my previous company when its management started to lean. Then, I started a smartphone game development company. My husband Tani is a colleague and classmates from my previous company. When I retired, I invited a few people to join me, but my husband stayed. And when I said I was going to start my own business, he was very much against it. Yes, I know. Tani is not the type of person who likes adventure, much less trying new things. He always wants stability. He has no desire to work and is not interested in promotion. He just wants to get by day to day. He has no desire for things and no hobbies. Compared to Tani, I am the complete opposite. I want to be successful in my work and I always want to challenge myself. I also like shopping. I enjoy going to live shows of my favorite artist. At first glance, it may seem that we are opposite and that we don't match, but we are not. What they lack in each other, they make up for together. In fact, I think we have good chemistry. We started as an office romance and got married two years ago. And six months ago, we bought the house of our dreams. We knew it would be a once in a lifetime purchase, so we made no compromises at all. We were very particular about the color of the house, white being the base color. And since we both love children, we prepared a room for the child who would be born in the future. The house is filled with the aroma of wood, and we carefully clean the house every day. Since we moved into the new house, Tony has been saying to me more and more, I want to have a child as soon as possible. Jessica, if you keep working, you will be left behind. You see on social networking sites that everyone has kids. You know that, don't you, Jessica? My parents are rushing me to have kids as well. Why don't you save your work for a while? This was my biggest fear. Tony's income has decreased significantly. Many people left the company for that reason, and now there are only three employees, including Tony. And the vacation is called remote work. This month, he only went to work a few times. Before I knew it, his salary was reduced to an hourly rate, like a part-time job. We bought a house with a mortgage, and we can hardly live on my husband's income alone. But the issue of income is a sensitive one, so there was no way I could tell him directly. So I kept my mouth shut. Tani also noticed that his income was decreasing, but he turned away from his new job. I responded, choosing my words carefully. I guess so, but I still want to focus on my work. I want to save more money. If I have a child. Of course, I want to think about the child first. I don't have anyone I can trust completely when I'm out of the office. So, I'm sorry. Please wait a little longer. I'll think about it. Tony looks unhappy. You know, my mother is always asking to see her grandchildren. I'm sorry, but you've got to think about my dignity too. You know. I've told my mother that Jessica is unable to have children because she's too picky. She won't be convinced if I don't say so. I knew that too. Every time my mother-in-law looked at me, she would say, "Are you not ready yet, Jessica? Work is good, but you have to have a child before you can be a full-fledged man. You know, no matter how good you are at your job." A woman who cannot produce offsprings is half a man. Be a full-fledged woman soon. There is no way I can agree with such an opinion. But my mother-in-law is stubborn, 
and rigid woman. I could not expect Tani, who is a mother's son, to take my side, even if I gave him my opinion. I was tired from work, so I tried to avoid seeing her as much as possible. Whenever we met, she would talk about our children. She probably doesn't know about my husband's income. I don't think she could ever think of having children if she saw our current financial situation. One Sunday, I was relaxing, trying to spend the holiday with my husband. When the chime rang, my mother-in-law was there through the monitor. I really wanted to use the answering machine, but it was not possible because we had a car. My husband opened the door, and as soon as he opened it, she turned to me and said in a sarcastic tone, "You've embarrassed me, Jessica." Naturally, I had no idea what she was talking about. I had just bumped into a friend of mine from school. She told me that she has three grandchildren. He is younger than Tony. She bragged about her grandchildren. I never thought I would be subjected to such humiliations at my age. Having a wife who is a piece of shit, I must be miserable like this. She turns her anger toward me. Don't you feel sorry for Tony too? You are not going to be young forever, so you need to plan your future properly. You talk about work and work and work, but you are just making games. Anyone can do that, not just you. Ignorant people are the scariest. They don't know anything about other people's hard work, but they are the ones who are taken advantage of. As you can imagine, I couldn't stay silent either. With all due respect, I think you should be aware of your ignorance. I understand that you want to see your grandchildren, and I'm sorry for you felt sad. But I can't keep quiet about my job. It is not a job that just anyone can do. It is unpleasant to hear people talk like that about a game that our employees work hard every day to make. When I said that, my mother-in-law laughed slightly. What are you trying to be so cool about? Is that your game more important or your child? Which is it? If the nerdy games is still important to you, it makes sense. It's such a ridiculous story, isn't it? I had been avoiding this because I didn't want to get in trouble, and now I am getting revenge. It makes my head hurt. What is it? Which is more important, that job or me? Such nonsense! It's ridiculous to compare such things, and they are completely different vectors, aren't they? I understand what you're trying to say, but from this point on, it's a married couple story. Please let us come to a conclusion together. I thought my words were a little too strong, but I couldn't stay silent any longer. Tony. Never defended me and kept silent. Then my mother-in-law, her face bright red, sniffles and comes at me. You must feel bad for me, right? Tony is too kind to say anything. Don't you think it would be worse if he worked harder than you? I get it. I feel sorry for Tony. I'll live here too. You're building the nursery, even though you can't even have a child. If you don't want to have kids, don't you have that extra room? You are infertile, and we will have plenty of room in a four-bedroom. I'll move in with you. I was gasping at what she was going to say this time. When Tony opened his mouth, it's true. There's plenty of room, isn't it? I don't want to have kids, so it will be more efficient for me to live with my mother. Jessica is careless. It's good to have someone at home for security. I agree. I was surprised by his statement. I know Tony is a mom's boy, but I didn't think he would go so far out of control without asking my opinion. I was angry too, so I sarcastically said to Tony, "Tony, you are at home because of the remote work." 
I think the security is perfect. If I needed security, I would have hired a professional company to do it. I don't have anything expensive enough to need security. What kind of house are you talking about, Tony? He looked annoyed and turned on me. Can't you see? That kind of attitude discourages me. Jessica's success in becoming independent was just a fluke, wasn't it? Even if I had started my own business at that time, I would have been successful. I would have made a lot of money. The heat in my body quickly cooled down. To tell you the truth, Tony, you can't do it. You've had so many chances to give up on this company. You can't even make your own decisions. It's not that easy to run a company if you can't make a decision on your own. Employees won't follow a boss who doesn't do his job. Tony looks just like his mother-in-law and gets angry at me. You are really an arrogant and not very pretty woman. If she can't even have children, she's a failure as a person. Do you understand? Life has to be passed on to the next generation in a relay system. So if you can't have more than two children from me and Jessica, it will lead to a decrease in the population. My mom is right. If you can't listen to her, who is a senior in your life, then you're not worth talking to. You're polishing your arrogance too much. You should live with my mother and let her teach you about that. No one else is going to teach you anything. You need to have your morals drilled into you as a human being. He is saying this in a very righteous way. But I never said I didn't want children in the first place. I just didn't want to have children because there is no way I can live on Tony's earnings alone. In order to protect my mother-in-law's reputation, I've kept quiet about it. But I'm going to reveal it. Please, look at this. Can you say that my arrogance is the reason why we don't have children? With that, I produced a household account book and my husband's and my pay stubs. My mother-in-law stared at it with a mousy expression. And Tony looked impatient. I knew it would be tough for him to show this to her. Because his salary is only as much as a student's part-time job. With this amount of money, he would have to pay the mortgage and be the mainstay of the family. It is impossible. I opened my mouth. As you can see, our family's financial situation is made up of two people working. I can't think about my children just yet because I don't want them to be miserable or poor. If I want to continue my marriage with Tony, I have to give up now. Then, Tony says with an impatient look on his face, I didn't ask you to show mom your paycheck. Do you really enjoy making me look bad? Then his mother said, A man's income is not everything, you know. Tony's mild-mannered personality makes him a good father. Why don't you be the mainstay of the family? I'm going to fall over. No, no, no. When he's at home, he only reads comic books and plays phone games. If Tony was a housemate, that would make sense. And you know, the women are the only ones who can have children, right? If I take a leap of absence for six months, this house will go bankrupt. They are speechless when I said that. My mother-in-law is puckering her mouth like a goldfish. I continue. I think it would be more fun to have kids, and I would grow up. But a man is only a man, if he has the financial resources to support his family. I think that's a perfect score, if we both earn good money. But I don't agree with your way of thinking. Tony was furious, and starts yelling at me. Jessica's superiority is ruining me. I have a bus all the way home. Get out of my house. I don't even want to see your face anymore. My mother-in-law is biting at me too. That's right. Who do you think you are to say what you want to say? Fine. I'm going to get the divorce papers. Donnie, 
divorce this piece of shit wife of yours. With that, the two went to the city office together. Why I have to leave is a mystery. But I don't want to be with Tony anymore. I don't even want to see his face. That's my line. I'm running out of patience too. I'm finally ready to leave home. I'm going to take this opportunity to pack my things. I don't like to have a lot of stuff to begin with. Basically, I don't want to have anything in my room. I am what is commonly known as minimalist. Packing was over in no time. My mother-in-law and Tony are in an angry mood and are filling out the divorce papers as soon as they came home. Tony slapped me with it. I've already filled it out. It's now or never if you want to hold me back. No matter how much you apologize, if you file for divorce, you never get it back. I am not going to be able to go to work tomorrow because of the mental anguish you've caused me. So, give me this house instead of alimony. You make a lot of money, so I'm sure you can afford it. Well, if you apologize, I'll forgive you. He wants me to hold off. I have never met such a small man. He is number one in my generation. I will fill out the divorce papers without hesitation. After a while, the divorce was successfully finalized. I often hear that divorce is more difficult than marriage, but it was easier than I had expected. And it was refreshing. I would like to praise myself for living in such a miserable way. For the time being, I decided to stay at the office. All the employees knew that the president would do this someday. They are laughing at me. But here comes my payback. I am not a good-natured person who would pay the mortgage on a house that belongs to someone I hate. There's no reason for me to pay alimony to Tony in the first place. That's right, the house is in my name. Of course, I couldn't get the loan with Tony's salary. After all, I put the house in my name. Therefore, I am the owner. I don't need this house anymore. And I asked my lawyer to join the case to avoid any trouble later on. The common property of the couple will be split 50-50. Of course, the house will be sold. It is still in a period of time when it can't be called a new house. I was very happy that it sold for the asking price right away. And for some reason, without any evidence, they thought they could continue to live in the house. My mother-in-law seems to have learned here the fact that the house is in my name only after the divorce. Tony had lied about the amount of his income. So it is not surprising that my mother-in-law thought so. When they found out that the house was sold, they turned pale. Then, my mother-in-law called me. Do you really enjoy causing us so much trouble? Tony is going to get back together with you. So you have to withdraw the sales right now. My mother-in-law is yelling at me. Huh? Get him back? I'm sorry. But no matter how much you pile on, I refuse. I am already a stranger. Then I'll come to your office right now and spread the word about the fact that you are a bad person. Please do, as you please. I'm busy, so please, excuse me. I hang up the phone and immediately reported the matter to the company's exclusive lawyer. The lawyer came. But even though I waited at the company, she never came. I've submitted the voice recorder of the calls when the divorce was discussed and now to my lawyer. He said it was more than enough material to get alimony. I was in the habit of recording on the voice recorder because of my job. What I am concerned about here is the financial situation of my mother-in-law and Tony. My mother-in-law has never kept the job. On a contrary, they lost their house. At the same time, the company Tony worked for went bankrupt. Tony became unemployed. They look for a good paying job, but they don't have a career so there is no way they can get one. They have no savings to begin with. So Tony started working as a part-timer for a day job. And then, I had a lawyer come in. 
they bowed down to their relatives and borrowed money to pay the fee in one lump sum. The lawyer was very surprised. And I cannot stay in the office forever. I need a space where I can rest. Come to think of it, I haven't felt at ease at home recently. I took the plunge and bought a condominium near my office. I live alone, so I decided to focus on security. My experience with the divorce led me to develop a love simulation game for adults. It was a bigger hit than I had expected. It became the company's signature game, and I still love my job.